bench at all. We heard this story, too, that you were skating by the bench and Tim Hunter was giving you shit because you were whacking Pavel at the end of the game, and then he came down around back through the tunnel and he met you down yeah. underneath. I was giving it to him. It was in Vancouver, and uh, I was calling him old something. Yeah. And uh, you can, you can I was just giving it to him, right, giving it to him. And so we got thrown out. And in the old in the old rink, we went straight off our bench and little thing and made a left. And theirs was over to the right side. He came off the back of the bench before me, and he was standing behind one of those big-ass pillars, right? Mm -hmm. And I come, you know, jotting down off the bench, going to make the left into the room. All of a sudden, this big arm came out and grabbed right onto me. And he said, old, eh? And I'm like, ah, here we go. And here we're under there. We're going at it on the concrete. There's this this uh, banner thing up behind, and in behind there was like a buffet for people that were yeah. I don't know what the hell they were doing. We go flying through that thing, knock over the tables. Everything's going everywhere. Our, my trainer's out there, and he's like ha ha ha, and he doesn't know what to do. <laughs> and and Quinn comes out the bench, and he's like back right off. And we're like both stop instantly. And it was like we just kind of looked up, stood up, broke up, and went our own direction. But yeah, we exact went out there for a while. That story yeah. to a T is exactly the way he said it too. So yeah. neither of you guys yeah, are bullshit. So it was pretty cool. You know, like you're, it's tough to stand up on concrete when you got skates on, and we were like, oh. and I can just remember seeing the people there, like, oh, and I don't even know what they were doing down there, but it was that's what it was. And my trainer yeah. always acted like the toughest guy in the world. We used to call him Don King because he always wanted to set up the fights and all this kind of thing, and gave out robes. But all of a sudden, when it was happening, he was right there. I can remember going, ah, I was like a hot potato, just didn't know what to do. And he got it all he was all nervous and scared of what was happening. So yeah, that uh, that was a long time ago. Yeah, pretty good story though. We wanted I'm to, that old guy now. Yeah, we wanted to bring that up for sure. It was a good story when Tim was telling it, so now it's a good one on your end. And like yeah. like you were saying, none of you guys got suspended because there was no cameras, there was no social Not media. Now, now you would be suspended. Nobody even for knew years. what was going on under there. Other exactly. than you know, them hearing the ruckus and the and, and Gwen stepping off the bench and my trainer coming out because he was going to the room with me just to hang out. So yeah, it was yeah, that kind of stuff happened a lot back then and just nobody ever Nobody ever got in trouble for it. So was, Barnab so was Barnaby really the worst shit talker in the league? Uh, he was right up there. Barney had no boundaries. You know, he would just let it go. And, and some nights you just sit on the bench and you just shake your head going, what the <laughs> hell are you doing? He was always and smiling, he, though. Oh, God, yeah. Like, I, I've told many a times, this guy had balls the size of bowling balls because he didn't care. and He'd go at anybody, say anything, do anything, just to try to get the upper hand. And he uh, he bit off more than he could chew some nights. But in, for the most part, <laughs> Little Logger would just hang in there, and he would yap the whole fight, and he'd piss off. I fought him three times yeah. once he left when he was with Pittsburgh. And, and uh, you know, all three times I just wanted to put my – fist through the back of his head and you know <laughs> we're hanging out the night before and hung out after but during in that few minutes it was just because he just said such stupid stuff but anyways he was he was effective man this kid could play and, and and he was effective in the game he played and and the way he'd get guys going but yeah he he he, he said some things out there that you just now if you ever did it he'd be chased out of the league for the rest of his career he'd never play again oh yeah because he just this nothing. And you know what? Nothing bothered him. When we're talking. You could say whatever you wanted to say to him and he'd just laugh it off and it you know, it wouldn't even wouldn't even phase him. So you couldn't even get him back that way. Beating up the Nordiques fan that it jumped over the glass and ran across the yeah. Can you tell bad that decision story? on his part. Yeah, really bad decision on his part. <laughs> it was a five on five fight on the ice. Herb Raglan had hit Clint Malarchuk, so that turned into a five on five on the ice. And we're all standing there watching it. All of a sudden, in the corner of your eye, you see this guy sitting on the glass up behind the bench. I remember John Muckler grabbing onto Ken Sutton's stick, and he goes, I'll get him. And he went to poke him. I got a picture of him just ready to poke the guy, and he dives into the bench. We grab on him, throw him onto the ice. He jumps up off the ice, comes running right back at the bench again. I get him with my left hand in the hair, and I had a head on the board. <laughs> I hit him I don't know, 17, 18 times or something. I yeah. stopped. <clears throat> Excuse me because my, my hand was getting so sore. The cops are jumping on him. They wrestle him down to the ice. They get him off. I got a ball of hair like a baseball in my hand. This hand's throbbing from hitting him so hard. 
the referees all of a sudden come over and they start picking up bullets off the ice because they had fallen out of the police officer's belt when they're out there wrestling the guy down. They're kicking the crap out of him in the in the hallway. You can hear him screaming. We're standing on the bench going, what just happened? You look over to the Nordique side, and they're just sort of sitting there going, what the is going on? <laughs> and it was like it just – all of a sudden they dropped the puck and we kept playing. But come to find out, the guy was supposedly after did an interview, and he said he was protesting the violence in the sport. And then he proceeds to jump into our bench to try to do something about it. So – French guys, you know, you just don't know about them, you know. Too many yeah, Pepsis yeah. and Joe Louis and smokes. Yeah, <laughs> Ter- terrible idea. Did you, you, I guess, but you, he was hurting the next day. Yeah. I've always said if there's ever hockey goes back to my, to Quebec, I'm going to find that guy. I'm going to go find out where he lives, go knock on his door and just say, hey, what's what, what were you thinking? Just to try <laughs> yeah. to see what he – so, but anyways, that's what, it was, that's what happened. And when it was over, it was over. And – Get on the bus, yeah. and I said to Gordy Don, I said, Gordy, is that the craziest thing you ever saw? He's like, no. Same building, playing junior. He said somebody carried in three piglets in a in a pillow sack, threw them over. Pigs were running all over the ice. They were shitting everywhere. And he says everybody was trying to catch him. He goes, that's the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> hey, did you ever play with a, a Wayne Van Dorp growing up? Wayne Van Dorp, yep. Yeah. I played with the Dorpster in, uh, in Rochester. I was yeah. probably 88 my first year. And Dorper got picked up by, I don't know if it was Rochester or Buffalo. And he came in and just a massive, just scary looking bugger, man. I was like, yeah. I was like a 19 year old kid. And I'm like, what the frig is this? He's like Sasquatch coming in. <laughs> and he had an old Fargo van and he lived in it. He parked it in the parking lot at the rink plugs the whatever in the heater in or whatever the hell he had in the van and he was living in it because he was so cheap and he was just that's where he lived he'd be the guy that we'd go to lunch or dinner or something like that and back then you never made much like we didn't make much in the miners at all and uh you know so you'd always leave a tip Harper was always the last guy to leave and he'd steal the tip off the table and you know out you go but Beautiful man, good guy, great stories, and I'll tell you what, he's so so nice. Like, you know, he sit there and tell you, you know, tell you whatever you need to know for hours and just laugh about it. But uh yeah, no, I I, I had a lot of fun playing with him. It wasn't long, but I, I did uh, experience Wayne Van Dorp. Yeah, he uh he coached his kid and me played hockey against each other as little kids and uh he was a coach of the other team. I remember him tossing the benches off the off the behind the bench. He was throwing them yeah. over the ice. Oh yeah, it was great times. Well, he's a local legend around our neighborhood. He's a regular. Oh, right? at the, he's a regular at the John B down the street. Yeah, our bar. It's a bar. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, one guy Tim Hunter brought up. I don't know if you ever played him or ever fought him. Was uh, Nick Fotu the two? Nick the two. Nick Patil. Yeah. yeah, that's the name. Nick yeah. Patil. Yeah, no. I played uh, played in Rochester. I played against Nick in New Haven. Hunter said time. he was the toughest guy he ever played against, ever fought. Yeah, I never fought the guy, but I was like 19 at the time, and we were all into New Haven, and all everybody was talking about Nick Fatil's here, Nick Fatil. It's almost like slap shot when he's at Hammerhands looking at the end of the <laughs> yeah. And Nick Fatil, and I'm like, who the hell is Nick Fatil? But by that time, he had, you know, he was – past his prime and he was just going he was playing and but uh i can remember how nervous they were and how 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 they were just a buzz about nick patillo we're playing against nick patillo so uh that was my only experience with played one game against him and that was it so but never fought him 